that if what is required is that these people be separated from God, is I'm not convinced that a perfectly loving God would take that additional step of, oh yeah, and I'm also going to physically torture you for an eternity, right? So when I'm articulating this, I'm articulating C.S. Lewis's. This is widely regarded as C.S. Lewis's definition of hell. C.S. Lewis's famous phrase with respect to hell is hell is a place where the door is locked, not on the outside, right? That's a jail. You throw somebody in the jail, you lock the door, you throw away the key. The door is locked on the inside. Uh, when I, sometimes when I teach this, I refer to it as a tragic refuge, right? It's where people, as a final act of God's love, he gives them a place where they can be away from God, where God will no longer stand at the door and knock, where they do not have to be in relationship with God. He gives them a place where they can go, they can be away from God for an eternity, right? Yet it's tragic because these people were created to be in relationship with God, and their only chance at joy is in that relationship, right? So C.S. Lewis's picture is the door is locked on the inside. Now, the question is, how is this view painful? How is it tragic, what I just articulated? The humans were created to be in relationship with God, and those separated from God cease to be what they were created to be. I would even uh, add in a nod in Chris's direction that they are destroyed in terms of what they were intended to be. I would call that a functional destruction. Chris will say more about this. But they are destroyed. They are not what they were intended to be. And a great illustration of this comes from the great theological treatise, The Twilight Zone. In 1961, there was an episode of The Twilight Zone titled, A Nice Place to Visit. And it describes a petty criminal who's lived just a terrible life, right? His entire life, he's just stealing from people, killing people, the worst sort of guy. He's getting away after a robbery. He gets shot, and he wakes up, and he's in this beautiful place. And there's this guy in this white suit that's taking care of his every need. And he realizes that he died. He got shot, and he's like, Poof. Wow, I thought I was kind of a bad guy, but here I am. I, mess, I guess I must have, you know, I actually must have made it. I, I'm okay. And he realizes this, this guy in the white suit, he'll give him anything he wants, right? So he wants to go gambling. He can go gambling, and he never loses. He talks to ladies, and beautiful ladies are just, oh, yeah, they're all, they're all willing to hang out with him. He's like, this is just the best thing. But after a while he realizes that every single time you play cards, you get four aces. It's not interesting anymore. And in a, after this kind of, the frustration builds up and builds up, he finally just yells and says, this place stinks. I don't belong here, right? So, you know, I, get me out of here. I want to go to the other place. I don't belong in heaven. And this is where Sebastian Cabot, the guy in the white suit, with his delightfully evil laugh says, Heaven? You think you're in heaven? You are in the other place. And then the voice over at the end says, a sad little man who always wanted these things, and now he's going to get it for the rest of his life. Right? Do, 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 do. Yeah. Just powerful. Now, you can't make theology out of all the details of that, but you get the basic, <laughs> you get the basic idea there that people are, their character is being formed in a particular way that they say, this is what's good. And God says, okay, if you want to have that, go ahead. But in that, there is such emptiness. The pleasures of this world robbed of any meaningful relational context, and in particular, relational context with God, become empty and even excruciating over time. And that's what people get. So this is a model of hell that is, I think, based on choice and yet is enormously painful. 